Nobody else, nobody else. Hallelujah. Only you, God, only you, only you, only you, only you. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, Father. Hallelujah. Only you, God, only you, only you, God. Glory to your name, Father. Hallelujah. Bless you, God, bless you, God. Only you, only you, God. You are holy, only only you, God. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Bless his holy name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for joining us. 
live this morning. We're so grateful that you tuned in. We're Wings of Eagles Christian Church, and we just welcome you to this broadcast. We're just so happy, so happy to have you with us. We hope you find encouragement in this message this morning. We just thank our wonderful pastors. We honor them this morning. Apostle Vernell and Prophetess Juliet Austin, we're so grateful for them. So there, there is a word from the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. On this wonderful first Sunday in October, there's a word. So let's pray first. Father, Father, we honor you as the head of our lives. God, we bless you. We are so grateful for your faithfulness, God. We exalt your name above all others. We declare there is no other name under the heavens like yours, God. God, we open our hearts and our minds this morning to receive this divine word straight from you. The word that you set aside for this very moment, God. Help us to take it in, God. Help us to find ourselves somewhere in this message and come into agreement with what you have to say. We shut out all the cares of this world. As we lean in, we lean in to listen to your voice this morning. We're excited about what you have to say, God. We thank you in advance for understanding. We thank you for revelation this morning. And we declare that this word will do exactly what it was sent to do, Father. Father, we lift up those who have been affected by the recent storm. We ask for your continued grace and your mercy and strength. As people work to rebuild God, we speak peace over their lives. We speak comfort to those who have lost homes and property and even loved ones. God, you promise to never leave or forsake. And God, we stand on your words this morning. We believe you, God. We believe you, God. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, fall fresh right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow this morning. Our main scripture for this morning is going to be found in the very first chapter of Deuteronomy. That is Deuteronomy 1, verses 6 through 8. And I'm going to be reading mostly from the New Living Translation this morning. I'll tell you that in advance. And I think one time I'm going to be reading from the message uh, directly after this. But most of the time it's going to be the New Living Translation this morning. So here we go. Deuteronomy 1, verses 6 through 8. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, You have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, and the coastal plain. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon and all the way to the great Euphrates River. Look, I am giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it. For it is the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to all their descendants. And here it is in the message version, verses 6 through 8. Back at Horeb, same mountain, God our God spoke to us. You've stayed long enough at this mountain on your way now. Get moving. Head for the Amorite hills, wherever people are living in the Arabah, the mountains, the foothills, the Negev, the seashore, the Canaanite country, and the Lebanon, all the way to the big river, the Euphrates. Look, I've given you this land. Now go in and take it. It's the land God promised to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their children after them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our topic for this morning is break camp and move out. Break camp and move out. Break camp and move out. So let's get clear about what the Lord is saying to his people in this scripture, and let's put some things into context. I hope that's all right. Deuteronomy is a book authored by Moses and chronicles his fulfilling his divinely appointed role as the leader of the nation of Israel during this time period. This book, Deuteronomy, places the nation 
of Israel at the edge of the promised land, the edge of the promised land. God is getting ready to fulfill the promises that he had made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob way back in Genesis. God had promised the offspring, God had promised them offspring that would outnumber the stars and a whole lot of land, people of God. A whole lot of children and a whole lot of land. Hallelujah. A whole lot of children and a whole lot of land. Somebody grab hold of that. So the promised land is about to happen. Promised land is about to happen right here. The promised land is about to come to fruition. More context. This is the latter end of the journey for this nation of Israel because we read in Deuteronomy 1, 1 through 3, up above, in other words, these are the words that Moses spoke to all the people of Israel while they were in the wilderness east of the Jordan River. They were camped in the Jordan River, in the Jordan Valley, near Suf, between Paran on one side and Tophal, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dizahab on the other. Normally, verse 2 says, normally it takes only 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea, going by way of Mount Seir. Verse 3 says, but 40 years after the Israelites left Egypt, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses addressed the people of Israel, telling them everything the Lord commanded him to say. 40 years after the Israelites left Egypt, Moses addresses the people. So there they are. They're at Kadesh Barnea, which bordered the promised land. Somebody will get this next line. They're on the edge of glory. They're on the edge. They're right on the edge. And they're supposed to go from there directly to Herod, the land that God had promised them. We know now that it took the children of Israel 40 years to travel the same distance that could have been traversed in 11 days. Somebody's listening. The people lived just outside of the promised land for 40 years. Why is that? Why is that? I'm glad you asked. It's simply put, simply put, because they lacked faith and they lacked obedience. There were consequences for the behavior that they had displayed along the journey. We won't revisit it all because we don't have time. And, well, quite frankly, the Lord has admonished me personally. I don't know about you, but me personally about doing that, about revisiting the past, about revisiting past sins. He says he's forgotten them. So literally, there is no need to review or revisit your past sins. Listen, somebody. You get the lesson from it, you get delivered from it, and you move on. You simply move on. You break camp and you move out. You break camp and you move out. If you've ever gotten comfortable with your faults and thought, well, I'll just settle in right here because this is the way it is for me. This is the way I am. You say something like, I know this place. I'm not sure what's up ahead, so I'm going to just stay here where I'm familiar. I know none of you out there have done that, but I'm just talking to somebody who may listen to this perhaps later on. You say, I'm going to settle right here because I know this place, and I'm not sure what's up ahead if there is anything up ahead ahead. If you have ever been in that place, if you're there now, this message is for you too. This message is for you too. This, this, is, this is God saying, be bold and break camp this day. Be bold and break camp this day. You don't have to stay there for 40 years here with your spirit. It may be a different number for you. Maybe it's 11 years, 12 years. Maybe it's just two months. God is saying, you don't have to stay there. Break camp and move on out. Find yourself here in this message and get what you need in Jesus' name. So Numbers 32 and 13. Numbers 32 and 13 says, The Lord was angry with Israel and made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until, listen, until the entire generation that sinned in the Lord's sight had died. 
That was the penalty. This period of 40 years represents the time that it takes for a new generation to rise up, to wipe out an old one, to raise up a new one. So God kept a vow he had previously made. You heard it. When the elders had discouraged the people from going into the land that God had given them, Numbers 32 Verses 11 through 12. Of all those I rescued from Egypt, no one who is 20 years old or older will ever see the land I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for they have not obeyed me wholeheartedly, the word says. The only exceptions, it says, are Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kezanite, Kenzanite, Kenizzite, the on, I'm going to read it again. The only exceptions are Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenzanite, and Joshua, son of Nun, for they have wholeheartedly followed the Lord. Wholeheartedly is the word we want to hone in on there. Wholeheartedly. Faith and obedience are absolutes in this season, people of God. That's what we want you to get. Faith and obedience are absolutes in this season. The term wholeheartedly is used there. That means with complete sincerity and commitment. Complete sincerity and commitment. Doesn't mean you won't have some fears. Okay, don't get it twisted. It doesn't mean that fears won't try to creep in. But you have to do it anyway, saints of God. Beloved, do it anyway. Do it afraid, as I've heard before. Do it afraid if you have to. The great Nelson Mandela said that he learned that courage, listen, was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. Hallelujah. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. Conquer your fears, beloved, by doing it afraid. Sometimes you just have to go anyhow, go anyway. Here are some definitions for further clarity. To break, to break. We're talking about breaking camp and moving out this morning. To break, to break is to cause something to separate suddenly or even violently. Camp, camp represents anything that has kept you stagnated and without progress. Anything that has kept you from moving on, that place where you just kind of settled down, settled in, decided, okay, this is it, this is, this is where I'm going to be. And it can be negative, and it can be somewhat positive, the reason why you're in that place. So break camp, break, to cause something, to separate suddenly or violently, camp, anything that has kept you in the same place, not making progress. Break camp then indicates taking down the tent, taking down that place that you have set up, packing up your gear and leaving a place, moving out, packing up your stuff and moving on. And I might add some things God is going to tell you to just absolutely leave behind. Leave it in the camp. Just leave it in the camp. You won't need it where you're going. Hallelujah. Some things you will not even need where you're going. Listen to this next piece. This is what I meant when I said it could be a positive reason. Because you may have set up camp at your last success, at the place of your last success. You got somewhere and things were going well. And you knew what you were doing. But you set up camp there and you stopped moving forward. So... In other words, we experience some degree of success and we get comfortable there because we're familiar with that place. Who am I talking to? <laughs> we know that place. We know how things work there. Uh, so I imagine the Israelites became well acquainted with their campsite. They had been out there in the wilderness a long time, saints of God. And, and, and they knew how to get what they needed out there. They seemed to trust God out there because he was predictable out there in their eyes. They could ask for the same things over and over and over again, and God would provide them. Hello, somebody. You know, maybe you know what to expect in that familiar place. It's, it's easy to trust God when you can see everything with your own eyes. Huh? It's easy to trust him when you can see things with your own eyes, when you know what's coming, when you know what to pray for ahead of time. 
But it's not so easy when you're unsure about what's over the mountain, what's in those hills. That's all a mystery. What is it? What is it? Listen, you heard the promise that was given way back in Genesis. And this promise came from a God who is only holy, only holy. This is the only holy one. That means he cannot lie, saints. He cannot lie, beloved. The one who swore by himself is the one who made the promise. He said, the land is yours Go take it in this case. The land is yours. Go take it. Looking at our passage of scripture again, Deuteronomy 1. Um, we're in the first chapter of Deuteronomy. And we're going to go through verses 6 through 8. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. It's time to break camp and move on. God told the nation of Israel, you've stayed here long, long enough. Time's up in this place. Time's up in this place. You're right here at the mountain. Bible scholars and archaeologists have, have determined that uh, the place in which this command was given was indeed at Mount Horeb or Mount Sinai. The campsite was indeed at the base of the mountain. Okay, listen, they were right there. They were right there. You are right there, saints of God. Why camp at the base of the mountain? Why not just go on in? You're right there. God told them it's time to move on. It's time to move out, beloved. In the next couple of verses, he says, go on up to the hill country of the Amorites and all the neighboring re regions. And he lists them, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, the coastal plain. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon. Go all the way to the great Euphrates River, he tells them. God gives specific instructions to the Hebrew people. How much more direct can he be? And some of you, he's given you some very specific directives. He tells his children exactly who they're going to encounter up in those hills. Can you imagine that? He tells them exactly, okay, this is who you're going to see. This is who's going to be up there. And I'm telling you now what to do about it. My God. He goes on to say in verse 8, look, I'm giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it. For it is the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to all their descendants, not some, but all, all. He restates the promise. <laughs> he restates the promise for the slow folk. He restates the promise for perhaps the hard of hearing. Who am I talking to? I don't mean to offend anybody, but if I am, I promise you it is for your good. He restates the promise for all the people who've been sitting in the back trying not to be seen, my God. He says, look, I'm giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it, he says. Go in. So I want to share a piece of all this that God revealed to me years ago. When he directs us, when he nudges us, when he um, uh, tells us, gives us instructions to break camp, to move out, to move on, it's important that we take heed. It's important that we do what he says. It's important that we go, even when you don't know what's up ahead. Because the question I want to ask is, could God be also sending a warning with it all, saying, listen, if you don't move, things aren't going to go well anymore where you are. You could even be in danger where you are. It's not good to stay when God has told you to go. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. I've experienced this. And I know I have some other witnesses out there. Grace in a place can run out when your assignment in that place has been fulfilled. You may know that place. You may, it may feel predictable or even comfortable for you, but it won't be comfortable for long. You don't want to remain where there is no longer the grace that allowed you to thrive in that place. Surviving, see, is not the goal anymore. Surviving is not the goal anymore, beloved. We want to thrive. You want to get to higher ground in the spirit. You know that place that God has, 
has, has reserved for you. You know, that place that God has set aside for just you. And he's told you, break camp, move out. And if he's given you those instructions this morning, I'm telling you to heed them. Heed them as, as, as encouragement. Also, take note that it could be a warning for you. Just understand that what's coming is always going to be better than what's been when you're in Christ. What's ahead of us is always going to be bigger than what's behind us. Amen? Just, just like when, when you've heard this many times, when the mother eagle begins to stir up the nest to get the eaglet out of the nest, to get the eaglet to fly, she uses those long talons that she has to stir that nest up. She brings all the, um, the, the rocks and the sticks and the stones and the, the thorns up to the surface of the nest. She slowly pushes away all the soft stuff, the cushiony stuff, the stuff that made it comfortable. She pushes all that away. And this is not to harm the babies. It's not to harm the eaglets. It's she wouldn't harm her offspring. Think of your father. Think of our father. He wouldn't harm us. It's to teach that mighty bird what it's supposed to be, a mighty bird. If the, a mighty bird. If the mother doesn't make that nest uncomfortable, that eaglet will not have the desire to fly. And that would not only keep it from learning to soar above the storms, but it would also make it vulnerable in that nest. It might be downright dangerous because remaining in that nest would make that baby susceptible to predators. I'm just talking to who I'm talking to. Think about that. You may want to go ahead and break camp, baby. You may want to go ahead and move on out. Your movement indicates to God that you are willing to obey his instructions, amen, and that you trust him. As you break camp and move, you show the Lord that you believe that whatever you may encounter up ahead, hallelujah, will not be able to overwhelm you because he's going to always be with you. You will take the land because he promised it to you in Jesus' name. Remember in Numbers 32 and 12 when God vowed that only those under the age of 20 would make it to the promised land? Well, the Lord's, char the Lord's charge directly to Joshua is recorded in Joshua 1, first chapter of Joshua. We're going to read verses 3 through 7. It says, I promise you, what I promised Moses, wherever you set foot, glory to God, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all of of the, all of the land of the Hittites. No one, hallelujah, verse 5, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Verse 6, take heed, listen, be strong and courageous, for you are the one. You are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Joshua 10 and 40. We are reminded about what Joshua did when he reached Canaan. It reads, so Joshua conquered the whole region, the kings and the people of the hill country, the Negev, the western foothills, and the mountain slopes. He completely destroyed everyone in that land, leaving no survivors, hallelujah, just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded. Beloved, Joshua believed God. He believed God when he said the enemies in the land would not be able to stand against him. His courage and his strength came from God and God alone. He did exactly what the Lord told him to do. He followed the Lord wholeheartedly. He proved himself to be faithful and obedient. And God, in turn, did just what he promised. 
the conquering of Canaan by Joshua and the Israelite tribes. My God, it was swift and it was decisive. It was quick, it was immediate, and it was sudden. It was conclusive, it was momentous, and it was major. Hallelujah. One additional piece, glory to God. The Lord doesn't want you to miss this, so I'm going to make it explicit for you. He desires that we not only look at our outward conquests, but the inward ones as well. God wants us to rid ourselves of all the sin, get all the sin out of our lives. All the old stuff, that stuff you used to do, those places you used to go, think about even. He wants it all annihilated. He wants nothing left that can come back and creep in again. No secret sins, no hidden habits. Anything not like him has to be crushed. This is so that we can go into our promised land with clean hands and a clean heart in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Break camp and move out. I pray that you found yourself somewhere in this word today and that you sense more strength and more courage coming from the Lord your God. I pray that you sense his presence in your life on a whole new level this morning. I pray that your sense of security surrounding his love for you is increased right now. I pray that you see him going before you to remove all obstacles, inward, outward, spiritual, natural, all of them. I pray that you know he goes before you to make your path straight. I pray that you're not only motivated to break camp and move out, but that the conquering of your new territory is quick and conclusive. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for his word this morning. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. That's why we should be faith-filled. Hallelujah. Break camp and move out, saints of God. If you have not invited the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart, it's just as simple as confessing that you need him, letting him know that you want him in. Open the door of your heart. Say, Father, come in. I need you. Cleanse me of my sins. I want to walk with you. I want to commune with you. I want you as part of your life, part of my life. All you have to simply say is, I believe you, God. I believe your word. I believe that you arose from the grave and you shed your blood for me. I believe all of it, God. If you said that this morning, if you've confessed before the Lord and invited him into your life, let us know. You can reach out to us right here on Facebook. You can go to our website. Check in there. Let us know. We'd love to pray for you and pray with you. And if you're available at 11 o'clock, we'll be right back here at 11 a.m. We're going to have in-person service. And we would love to see you come right on out here to Wings of Eagles Christian Church, 1418 Avondale Drive in Durham, North Carolina. You're welcome. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining our service today. We believe that your life will be changed through this message. If you would like to learn more about Wings of Eagles Christian Church, please visit woechristianchurch.com. Tap the About tab to know our pastors. Tap Contact to connect with us. Feel free to also see Inside Wo. On Sunday we have a virtual Thrive teaching on Facebook at 9.30 and in-person corporate worship at 11 a.m. with our full band and praise team. In keeping with our mission and vision, Wo has many ministries designed to train, equip, and provide hands-on support to every member of your family. If you would like to make a donation, then feel free to give via text message. Step 1. Text GIVE25 or any other amount to 919-551-3675. Step 2. Follow the prompts. Step 3. Register your credit or debit card. It's only required for the first time only. Join us virtually on Facebook at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening for Life Class. Visit us in person at 1418 Avondale Drive, Durham, North Carolina, 27701 Suite 15. Hey, if you're still down, don't stay grounded. Get up and soar high.